So in this video, we're going to set up Jenkins from scratch in a Docker container. Then we're going to create a multi-branch pipeline and connect it with a Git repository. During this step, I will also explain how to create different types of credentials in Jenkins. And finally, I will show you the basics of a Jenkins file to configure this multi-branch pipeline. So step one is to run Jenkins in a Docker container. So to use that, we need to find um, an official image for Jenkins on Docker Hub. So let's go. And as you see here, Jenkins results in an official image and some other images. And if you click here, you see that this image, the official image has been deprecated and the last version is 2.60, which is very old Jenkins version. And instead of it, we're going to use this image here. So that would be actually this one. Because this one is now officially maintained by the Jenkins community. And also if you see the text, the latest image actually has Jenkins version of 2.219, which uh, for most of the plugins, it's important to have a higher Jenkins version, otherwise they can't be installed. So we're going to take this uh, image and that's the name of the image. So on my command line, I'm going to execute docker run using this image, right? So I'm going to say docker run and the image. However, before I run this, I need to add some options like I need to expose the port so that I can access it from my browser, etc. So let's actually go back and see the documentation of how to run this. So all the explanation is here. So these are some of the options that we're going to use. And actually, let's go and do it. So first one is I'm going to expose the ports. And the first port I'm going to expose is port 8080, the Jenkins application inside container will run at port 8080 because Jenkins runs on Tomcat, which by default starts at this port. And I'm going to bind it to my hosts uh, port 8080. Another port we're going to expose is 50,000, which is basically a port where Jenkins master and slave communicate. So this will enable my Jenkins to bind slaves in case I add some. So the ports are open. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run it in detach mode and I'm also going to bind volumes to it. So to do that, I'm going to use minus V and I'm going to use a named volume, which I'm going to call Jenkins home. Meaning I don't have to have this as a folder. It's going to be automatically created. I'm just giving it a name which can be whatever you want. And I'm going to bind it to directory inside Jenkins container, Jenkins image under slash var slash Jenkins home. Now this directory is real and it's inside of Docker container. And this will create automatically create a volume. Now you have to be careful here because if you were to use a host volume here, which basically means that you take an already existing directory on your laptop machine and bind it to the Jenkins container, you might get some permission issues, uh, meaning the Jenkins user might not be able to write to that folder. And that could be a problem. You can actually check out my video, which I made about Docker volumes, where you can learn in more detail how this works. And the reason why we need to create a volume for Jenkins is to have data persistency for Jenkins. So when we remove the container and restart it or recreate it, uh, the data will still be there. And the reason why we need to persist this data is because all the Jenkins builds, all the configuration and all the Jenkins plugins and also Jenkins users will be stored there. So without this data, you will basically have to reinitialize the whole Jenkins. So important part here, and we're going to use the latest tag of Jenkins. And these are all the options we need. So um, I'm going to correct this one here, I forgot here. And I'm going to run this. And it's pulling the image from the Docker Hub 
it's going to start in just a couple of seconds. So the image has been pulled and the Docker container must be running already. So if I do Docker PS, I see my Jenkins container running and we actually need its logs. So I'm going to do Docker logs with a container ID and I'm going to see that Jenkins started and its initial setup is needed and this is the password I'm going to need to initialize it. So I'm going to copy that and if I go to localhost 8080, I will paste that password and it should start initializing. So I'm going to go with the suggested plugins and this is going to take some time to install all the plugins. So it depends on what uh, technologies your application uses or what source management uh, tools, etc. you will need different plugins for Jenkins. And I'm just going to go with the community one, suggested ones. Um, and later, of course, in Jenkins, you can manage these plugins. You can delete them, you can add new ones, etc. This is just the base. So now that it's done, I'm going to create the first admin user. Let's call it Jenkins user, some password. Okay, email address, I'm gonna just leave mine. And I'm gonna leave it localhost. And Jenkins is ready, and this is the view I get. So if I go to new item, because I installed uh, all these plugins, I see different types of Jenkins projects I can create. By default, you usually have the freestyle project. The freestyle project is used for simple single tasks, like if you wanna just run tests, for example. Uh, whereas with pipeline, you can configure the whole delivery flow, like test, build, package, deploy your application, etc. Pipeline is a more recent addition. So before that, they would just chain multiple freestyle projects to get a pipeline-like project. The pipeline project type is just for a single branch, uh, but in this video, we're gonna create a multi-branch pipeline, which will apply to multiple branches um, of the same repository. And if I go to manage Jenkins, that's where you as an admin user have all the tools to configure Jenkins and under manage plugins, you can actually add or delete or manage or update uh, the plugins that you have. So in available, I have all the plugins that I could install in addition to, to my Jenkins and installed, I have all the ones that I have actually um, selected at the beginning. You can uh, remove them again, or you can add new plugins. In the next section of this video, um, I'm going to show you how to create a multi-branch pipeline and how to connect it to your Git repository and how to build your project using that pipeline.